Hi, and welcome to Tech Talk, where we take a look at the latest in technology news and offer our insights and analysis to see if we can figure out what's going on. I'm Ken Mingus, executive editor at Computer World. I'm here with Computer World senior reporter Lucas Mirian. It's time to check in on blockchain and see what's been going on lately. So stick around. Okay, so Lucas, we're back. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for being here. Absolutely. Um, you know, we've talked a lot about blockchain over the last couple of years, and it, it dawned on me that uh, if 2017 was the year that blockchain started to sort of emerge and, and, you know, the hype went crazy, and then 2018 seemed to be the year that uh, it kind of really edged into supply chains, mm -hmm. you know, yep. Maersk and Walmart and the Olive Company and the Diamond Company and... Yep. And so it seems now that 2019, it's really getting uh, more of a foothold in the financial services and fintech area. Absolutely. And so, uh, you, you know, you've got the story uh, about IBM's announcement this week, so I thought we could start with that and then see where else blockchain may be going this year. Um, so IBM, this week, what's up? What's it doing? Well, they launched um, WorldWire, which is a uh, global payments network based on blockchain uh, and Stellar, the Stellar's blockchain uh, financial uh, network, right. and it's going to be based mainly on a stable coin, uh, which just means that that's fiat currency, right? Backed by fiat currency, basically. So one cryptocurrency is equal to one dollar in this case, okay. and it'll allow for uh, banks to cut out middlemen, banks and money transfer companies to cut out the middlemen, the bank central banks, and just make transfers between two entities on an open ledger. So the whole point here is to basically create this network that's pegged to real currencies rather mm -hmm. than just strictly like cryptocurrency. Like Bitcoin, for instance, doesn't have any real currency behind it. It's, no. it's valued at what everybody seems to think it's valued, which is why it can fluctuate so much. Supply and demand, yeah. Supply and demand. So with something like this, with stablecoin, you're looking at you know a, a real measure of, of value based on the U.S. dollar or whatever other, I guess, real currencies that... Uh, uh, institutions want to use. Yeah, it probably makes regulators a lot less antsy. They they do also have uh, Ripple crypto, cryptocurrency, so they can do you know do play in both fields well. basically. But yeah, but they they primarily it's probably going to be played through a stable coin, which is a lot easier to use um, since regulatory uh, oversight already covers that. Um, but there is a lot of gray area as well, especially since you're talking about cross-border uh, yeah. foreign exchange. And this just rolled out this week. Let me, let me ask you, you know, and, and and you may need to think about this a minute, but, you know, J.P. Morgan has also made some, some news uh, in the last few months um, mm -hmm. with its efforts around blockchain. Is this something that – this is obviously different than what J.P. Morgan is doing. But are they kind of related? You know, it, it very feels like so. they are. The, yeah, they're, they're, they're actually very similar. The only difference is, is that uh, IBM uh, is creating its stablecoin through a partnership with another company, uh, Stronghold USB. It's out of Nevada. I think it's out of Nevada. Okay. Um, and I'll correct myself later. If, if it's wrong, wrong, we'll let yeah. you know. <laughs> Uh, and uh, J.P. Morgan created its own stablecoin. Okay. And, but they're both uh, going to be used for uh, payment networks. And the whole point here is basically, as you say, you know, this is one of the advantages uh, of distributed ledger technology, which is blockchain, yeah. that you can eliminate the middleman, eliminate the, you know, all the, the layers of, um, I guess. Cross-border hops. Cross-border, yeah. everything. It, may, it, it basically smooths the, the movement of money and funds right. and currency between either institutions or... Now, with the, with the uh, IBM effort, is that, is that related? Is that geared toward institutions or is it more toward individuals or some combination thereof? So probably the, the greatest volume of traffic over the network will be from um, payment authorizers and mark makers. So the Western unions of the world who are uh, enabling uh, foreign workers to transfer their pay back to their home countries. So yep. they walk into a shop and they you know, hand the money to uh, then electronically transfer back to their home. Um, and that's what they'd, they'd use this network for. So they would take that money, convert it into this stable coin, and then be able to transfer it over the blockchain. Almost, well, that will be instantaneous. Mm -hmm. As soon as it's on the blockchain, all the parties who are um, uh, participating in the transaction will be able to see it immediately. But what's I, I think it's unique about this network is that it's also a messaging platform. So not only can you do these one one for one uh, uh, financial transactions, but you also create a communications network between banks and clearance and settlement. 
is the, is the idea there then that that because uh, I know one of the things you've written about is that this is near real time. It's not immediate, but it's five to ten seconds. About five to ten seconds, which is pretty darn close yeah. given given the scale of what we've been talking about. And you know that's been an issue with with blockchain in the past is the idea that sure you can scale it up, but then it gets slower and slower and slower as you figure out as you're adding you know blocks to the chain. Right. So obviously IBM has something here that that works in near real time. Um, I, I presume that, that, that financial institutions see that as a real plus. Yeah, absolutely. It, it creates, uh, it, it removes the fee process from the central banks that are typically involved and a lot of the regulatory uh, oversight. Um, I don't want to call it stumbling blocks, but maybe hurdles. Uh, hurdles yeah. yeah, the regulatory hurdles. It's friction. It's regulatory friction, basically. Exactly. And it takes uh, time and money. To you know, time is money in the financial services industry, so it reduces that. Um, but IBM is conservative, not conservatively. They're saying probably about fifty percent of the cost can be removed through this. Okay, so it's so it's a saving for our financial. Now, is yeah. this is this in place now? Is it actually live? Yeah, they actually went live with that. I think the first transaction was uh, March eighth. Uh, March eighth. Yeah. Okay, and do we know? Do you have the number at, at hand of how many institutions or? Um, um, entities are, are involved right now. I mean, I presume there'll be more down the road. But. Yeah, it's a very low number right now. It's about six that are involved. I think four are actually using the network now. Yeah. And, uh, and most of these um, banks are relatively uh, small entities, and they're not, uh, you know, they're not U.S.-based. However, uh, I did read a story today that there are a couple of uh, large U.S. banks that are considering joining the network, although IBM did not disclose who they are. Okay, they don't want to talk about it, I guess, until it's uh, until it's nailed down. Right. It does seem like, though, more and more as we get into this year, that that financial institutions have gone beyond just taking a, a serious look at blockchain and are now figuring out how to work it. And IBM is obviously wanting to be a player in that because yeah. you know it, it, it's going to be there's a lot of money potential. Yeah, I think there was uh, regulators and and others, uh, law enforcement, were weary about. Um, cryptocurrencies because they can be used for a lot of nefarious activities. Right. Uh, whereas a stable coin, because it's tied to fiat currency, is less so. Uh, you're guaranteed that you're going to be paid because there's a reserve of that money to e- equal the amount of uh, digital currency. There's real money behind it. It's, exactly. It, you, can't, you can't sort of artificially either inflate or deflate the value of, of the, the coin or the cryptocurrency because it's pegged to you know a solid currency. Right. And, and these networks... Uh, you're verifying the people on the network to begin with. So the Western Unions and I wrote down some other names, but other companies that make these wire transfers. Okay, good. All right. So at least I know now what, what IBM is up to. And uh, obviously this is something we're going to check back on because yeah. uh, as this gets into more financial services, uh, um, I, I, I'm sure there'll be more banks and institutions joining. Absolutely. Uh, let me shift gears because you had mentioned before we, uh, before we started taping that uh, – Another entity is getting involved with blockchain, and of course, it's got to be Facebook. Rumor so, has it. Uh, yeah. So, what? What is? Uh, give me a little sneak preview of what you've been looking at. Uh, what? Why would Facebook need a blockchain, and for what purposes? Is it money? Is it some sort of? It's money. It's again. It's all about money. Uh, so, Facebook would basically be challenging uh, other payment companies like Google Pay, uh, Samsung, something Pay. like Venmo, maybe. Uh, I don't you know, know that they can it, transfer between mobile devices, things like that. Or? Yeah, it's it's definitely a mobile payments application that they're looking at. So yeah. they would probably also use a stable coin, okay. to create their own stable coin, or possibly through a third party. And you'd be able to purchase things, say like advertisements you get on Facebook now, um, through this stable coin, through the Facebook coin. Um, the advantage here is that you most Facebook users. I think three times as many Facebook users are using a mobile device to connect to Facebook than they are a desktop device. Okay. And people don't really want to have to punch in their credit card information. They don't feel as secure uh, doing that on a, a mobile device. Yeah. And, uh, and it's also kind of a pain, and there's no real way to do it now. So if Facebook comes up with a payment method... Uh, they can make dollars off of this. So is this the sort of thing where, and I realize this is still very sort of speculative, and yeah. you know we're still trying to nail down all the stories, but is the idea that you would hand over your credit card information to Facebook, they would have it, keep it right. theoretically securely, just like all your other data. Right. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, yes, that was a little bit of snark, yeah. but I'm serious. It's like, okay. But anyway, yeah. um, so you would hand that to them, and then yeah. if you want to do some sort of transaction uh, through Facebook, right. the information, you know, the, 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 your credit card financial information would be there, yeah. and you would use the Facebook cryptocurrency, whatever it is, yeah. 
which would be blockchain secure to make the transaction. Yeah, they'd have to get financial services institutions on board uh, to actually su- probably supply the money. They, I mean, they could do it themselves. They're big enough, obviously, to yeah. do it. They probably wouldn't, though. Um, so they get some financial services industry to back them on this. But yeah, basically, you'd have a, a crypto wallet with uh, a stable coin in it, and you could use that money uh, or even credit through a, through a bank uh, to make purchases on Facebook. Okay. So blockchain coming to a Facebook near you. Um, there, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, well, I was going to say, there, there are other got? things I, I wrote down here that were interesting. I talked to Tell some me. analysts. Yeah. And the other thing that this would allow people, to, uh, Facebook to do is to fight fake news uh, and bots because using uh, blockchain, you can verify the identity of users. Now, that's right now, it's a, there's a little bit of an arduous process to do that on blockchain, but it could be simplified and therefore, you would have to verify who you are to participate. I mean, now you create a profile yeah. on Facebook. So yeah. you just be creating a profile with verification information. Now, who knows what that would be? Okay. So that's interesting. So the idea here is mm-hmm. it's not just financial, that there may be a way of actually um, mm-hmm. uh, establishing that whatever content is being shared on Facebook is coming from legitimate people rather than bots or... You know, I mean, if people are willing to sacrifice account. a little more time to register on Facebook for that purpose and... and we know they've been having a lot of problems lately with that sort of thing, yeah. fake news and bots. Yep. Um, it, it could be a venture for them. Okay. Yeah. Do we do we know if the Facebook uh, uh, coin has a name? Is it is it Zuckerberg? They have Facebook has not commented on Quat this. lose perhaps. They, I mean, it Quat was the New York Times and some Star other pubs that you know, said behind the scenes this is happening, but Facebook yeah. hasn't commented on it, so we don't really know much about it other than that. Okay. Well, I definitely look forward to hearing more about that because yeah. given uh, uh, the number of pies that Facebook has its fingers in, uh, I, I'm not surprised that they'd want to look at this because a lot of big tech companies are really taking you know blockchain seriously, but. I guess the proof's in the pudding when it's uh, when it's really rolled out. Yeah. Oh, I, yep. I, I wrote down also the bar- there's a Barclays analyst that came out today and said the valuation of this could be as high as 19 billion dollars. This is the Facebook part. Yeah, the Facebook uh, Facebook. Well, coin when you think about the number it. of people they've got on the network on their on their Making social purchases. media network yep. and and the you know the potential purchasing ability there, it'd be I'll be very curious to see if you as you say a financial institution would tie in with them. Yeah. Because that's gonna you know that's the sort of vetting you'd want to see rather than just Facebook saying, hey, yeah. we've got a new cryptocurrency. I would imagine they would go that direction, yeah. yeah. They'd have to have some backing. Good, got it. Any other thoughts before I let you go? No, I think that's pretty much it. covers where we are for now? Where we are now, yep. All right, as you can see, there's a lot going on with blockchain, and uh, we'll be revisiting this definitely uh, with the Facebook part and also IBM and some of the other uh, uh, tech firms that are involved. So Absolutely. Thanks for the update, Lucas. Welcome. For now, for Distributed Ledger Technology, that's a wrap.